So my name is Leah Feldman. I'm in the Department of Comparative Literature here at UCLA. Um, and I'm going to try to briefly outline my dissertation, which examines the relationship between Russian Orientalist representations of the Caucasus and forms of Islamic modernism that develop in Azeri literature from the 19th through the early 20th century. In 1920, discussions about the relationship between Islam and new forms of modern governance came to a head in the former imperial territories. The Communist International organized the first Congress of the Peoples of the East in Baku, the capital of present-day Azerbaijan. One, uh, over 2,000 delegates who hailed from America to India gathered in this historic trading post on the edge of Central Asia to rally for a worldwide proletarian revolution across the former imperial territories of the East. Reworking Marxist ideas, the Bolsheviks imagined the proletariat of the East as peasant masses who were liberated from the yoke of their capitalist imperialist oppressors, an attempt to legitimate the authority of the Soviet among the local peoples of the Caucasus and Central Asia. The Bolsheviks drew upon Islamic cultural traditions and symbols. Uh, for example, they organized the political demonstrations of the Ashura, uh, during the, uh, the Day of Ashura, a ritual uh, performance of Shia martyrology. They called for international proletarian holy war, or Ghazavat, a local form of jihad against British imperialism, and translated the term Soviet as the Quranic term Shura, signifying the specific democratic sociopolitical organization of Islam. During this period, Muslim intellectuals such as the Tatar thinker Mir Said Sultan Galiyev also authored some of the first formal engagements between Marxist politics and Islamic philosophy in Eurasia. While he positioned himself in dialogue with the global discourse of, his, of Islamic modernism, such as the work of the prominent 19th century religious scholar Jamal al-Din al afghani Sultan Galayev's discussion of the dispossession of the Muslim proletariat prefigured thinkers of the mid-20th century from Egypt to the Maghreb and Iran. However, the story begins earlier. During the 19th century, the Eastern Orthodox Russian Empire conquered the Caucasus in 1828 and Central Asia beginning in the 1860s. These imperial conquests changed the social and political space of the Russian Empire, creating a multi-ethnic, multilingual, and multi-confessional community. Oil-booming Baku at the beginning of the 20th century became a cultural center that attracted Russian, Ottoman, and Persian intellectuals. The beginning of the 20th century was not only, not only brought revolution, but generated a flurry of cultural production, including the creation of an international Turkic language press, some of the first film experiments after the Lumia Brothers um, by the Azerkino Film Company, and an internationally touring theater group, the Tariyev Theater Company, which performed uh, translations of Othello. These were some of the first performed um, in Baku and throughout the Russian Empire. In the 19th century, the Caucasus became a site of anti-imperial revolt and an exile destination for Russian opponents to the Tsar. Representations of the sublime plunging mountains, wide Caucasian steppe, and the figure of the Muslim mountaineer uh, revolutionary began to captivate the Russian imagination. Turkic writers and thinkers in the imperial space also began to produce work responding to Russian imperialism, revolution, and world war. Azeri poetry and prose during the period was directed at the supranational Turkic Muslim community in the empire interested in social reforms. The works uh, use genres from romantic poetry to satirical cartoons, and you'll see some of um, prints of, of the cartoons here, um, uh, to, uh, in order to discuss modernizing education, fighting religious corruption, uh, as well as generating support for the working masses and women's rights as well. And these journals were uh, published all the way, I mean, through uh, Egypt to across uh, Turkey and Iran. The, the project basically here so exposes the intertwining structures of power during the late Russian imperial history through the revolution and the early formation of the Soviet Union. 
by examining the intertextual encounters in Russian and Azeri literature within their historical political context, they trace the cultural history of the Russian Empire and early anti-colonial movements in Eurasia.